بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Almighty Allah, the entirely merciful and especially merciful. Dear viewers across the planet, I greet you with the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be with you. Ameen, ameen. And again, I'm reminding everybody that we use this kind of greeting and we are very motivated and encouraged to spread it as much as we can because this may be the first initiative for peace to be implemented and to spread out across the globe. Hoping that we ask Allah to help us to be able to do this great mission that's waiting for all of us to collaborate and work together to implement it in this world. As we used to do in previous episodes, under this beautiful title, Treasures from the Holy Quran, we are treasures lookers, looking for treasures. We are people who seek treasures. I am one of them. I'm quite sure that you are one of them. And these treasures are available. You just spend some time and some effort, you will find yourself getting some of these treasures. What a beautiful job. For little effort, you get a treasure? Yes. And you are getting it for free? Yes, for free. And alhamdulillah, we encourage everybody to benefit from this. We encourage the person to publicize as much as he or as she can this everywhere in the world so that people would get as many treasures as they can. They are for free. They are available for every human being. Take as much as you can. Don't deprive yourself. We take one verse and we try to explain it and we said that there is a homework for each one of us. After the end of each episode, you need to get some time for yourself to do some research to be more accurate, to get extra credit, in other words, because you already learned the lesson. The more you spread these lessons correctly among other humans, the more you are rewarded by Allah. And each one wants, each one is selfish to get as many rewards as he or she can, and they are available for everyone. This is one of our goals in this program, I'm sure, you share us with this program. This is ayah number 77. Ayah number 77 in the same chapter. Chapter that says, uh, yeah, Surat Al-Qasas, chapter of the stories, chapter number 28. Again, verse number 77, chapter number 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, with all these things around us, with all these resources and sources around us, with all these thousands, if not more than thousands, million courses and millions of books available of us, each one is trying to direct people and attract people's attention to their content. Where, where should we go? Where is our focus? There's a lot of temptations and a lot of issues that are mentioned that are spreading out and filling the world around us. Where should our focus be? Somebody would ask this question. And you'll find the answer here in this verse, number 77, chapter number 28. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وابتغ فيما آتاك الله الدار الآخرة ولا تنس نصيبك من الدنيا وأحسن كما أحسن الله إليك ولا تبغ الفساد في الأرض إن الله لا يحب المفسدين. This can roughly be translated as but seek with that wealth 
which Allah has bestowed on you, the home of the hereafter. And forget not your portion of lawful enjoyment in this world. And do good as Allah has been good to you. And seek not mischief in the land. Verily, Allah likes not the mufsideen, those who commit great crimes and sins and oppressors and tyrants, mischief makers and corruptors. Don't be like them. It's a lot of benefits, it's a lot of chunks that can be focused on here, at least four. And I'll begin with the last one. And this theme you will find it throughout the entire Quran. If not throughout all the holy books, the previous holy books. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are thankful to him. He kept this book safe and available and sound, uncorrupted for us. One important thing that you have all the time to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love any kind of corruption. Allah does not like the corruptors. Allah does not like those who corrupt the world, who corrupt their relationship with Almighty Allah on the top, who corrupt their relationship with the humans, who corrupt the systems that are available in this world that helps humans, those who are oppressors and tyrant who always want to take the best and leave the rest for others. All these forms and kinds of corruption, this is, you find, this theme is spreading across the entire Quran from cover to cover. Allah is against all these types of corruption in any fields and in any area. Allah does not like, whether it's individual or communal or global, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like it. Because if corruption spreads, it corrupts the relationship, even the corruption of your own self. When you corrupt the way that Allah created you by getting inputs different inputs from many other sources other than the main source that Allah created for you. Allah created for a mission and job, and you need to focus on it. Everything that you have, you have to target it and direct it towards later life. Because this life that we live is temporary life. It will end sooner or later. I'm quite sure every one of you and every one of us can see this by his own naked eye. People, the dear ones that we used to love, our parents, our grandparents, our relatives, our neighbors, they passed away, they died. Now they are getting ready for being for later life. This is the time you invest your time. This is the time. This is the location. This is where you need to invest all your skills and abilities to invest them for later lives. Because there's no more work there. There you get the fruits. You get the results. This is the area, the day. This is the life where we need to work and work and work and invest our effort and improve ourselves as much as we can and do a lot of obedience to Almighty Allah so that we can achieve the best in later life. There is another life, in the, the, the way that when we believe in later life, the question comes to you on any of us, all of us, am I ready for that? Am I preparing myself for that? Or am I just focusing on this 
limited world that I live in. If you are not a broad-minded person, if you have not read the most important book, the book of Allah, the only book that's divine on this planet, you deprived yourself from that, you are, will pay the price there. When you find the great loss that you will have on that time in comparison with others where they are going to get to be the best achievers and to get all these beautiful enjoyments that they are going to get. We are sure of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself guaranteed this almost in every two pages in the Quran or every one page you will find a reference, a direct reference or indirect reference to that so that it would help you remember. Allah is so merciful to us. So he repeats this in all different ways that you can imagine. Many strategies in many different ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us all the time of this life and the later life. And this is the best. This is going to never ever end. Will be the everlasting. Why would you invest in something that's not that does not give you the maximum goal and maximum benefits? It's you are smart as all the messengers of Allah where you invest in later lives. You use your time properly. You use your intelligence properly. You use all your skills to achieve there. Yet, don't overlook the dunya. In this world, there are some benefits and some enjoyments. It's your right. Allah created this life, this world for you. So try to get your portion of that. Whatever Allah made it legal for you and halal for you, use it. But this should not be at the expense of losing your place and using your location in the other world, which is later life. And perfect. And do good. Always ask yourself, am I doing good? Is this program that I are presenting to others is good enough? Is helping others? Is beneficial for others? You have to do the best you can. وأحسن. Perfect your work. Perfect your job. Perfect your actions. Perfect everything that you have in this life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done something. Allah perfected your life, perfected your face, perfected your body, perfected everything, uh, perfected the nature around you, perfected all this creation for you. So you are getting the best from Allah. Why don't you do the same thing? Do the best that you can in this world, in your study, in your relationship with people, in your relationship before that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perfect it. Perfect all the kinds of things that you have. You can see the kind, you can smell the fragrance of perfection from one verse only. So how about if you read the entire Quran, you feel that this theme of perfection is spreading across the entire Quran. So all the time you find this book, you will never find any other book that encourages you to do this. And the end of it, it tells you that, remember, if perfection is, again, it's corruption, definitely. The one who is perfect would not ever love corruption, to see corruption. You don't like to see corruption because it corrupts the perfection that you are trying to do. You can see these beautiful themes that are spreading everywhere around you. I myself, I'm quite sure you would say the same thing with us. You, we have never ever seen a book in the entire world that encourages people to do as good as this book. And it reminds you, Perfect your work. 
do something good and do something perfect in this world. So you can see the positivity, positivity in the entire Quran. Simply, no other book matches the Quran simply because this is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of this entire universe. And remember, he is the one who is worthy of being worshipped, who is worthy of being followed, who is worthy of being thanked all the time. And the more you do of this, the more you will find yourself are improving and getting higher and higher and achieving more than others. And I hope that you would be one of those achievers, one of those great achievers that prepare themselves for later life. You are doing great achievement in this world, yet what is in your mind is that is something greater than what average people are doing. You learned this. You learned this from this verse. You learned it from many other verses in the Quran that Allah asks you to keep away from any source of corruption and any form of corruption. Rather, to perfect and to do something good in your life in all things that you do. Don't look at anything and trivialize it. No, you need to perfect it, even if it looks not as important as you may think, yet you have to work hard on it and to improve yourself on it. And before that, you already have worked hard on your mindset. You have known that the focus is not in this world because it is temporary, it is short, it's going to end sooner or later, but you have learned that your focus is there in later life uh, where the life would never end and the enjoyment would never end and all your life will be comfort and ease and enjoyment. And we do thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us uh, to these things as early as possible before we miss the opportunity. And we do thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to this. Ameen, ameen. And we continually ask Allah to guide us, to give us the ability and the skills to share this kind of knowledge with all human beings as much as we can. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ